Chapter 1116. Duped. Cloud Grasping Fist. Lord Grimm's actions were sneaky to the extreme. He had made his way to Zhang Zhao's dazzling hundred blossoms, borrowing the flashiness of his attacks as cover. Just looking at Yi Xu's shameless sneakiness, Zhang Jiali was sorely tempted to toss a grenade to send this guy straight into the midst of dazzling hundred blossoms attacks. Just kill him and be done with it. But then he remembered that they were supposed to be working together, and so he resisted the temptation. Yi Xu noticed Royal Style's shift in tempo shifted and seized it, using the hundred blossom cover to launch a sneak attack. Royal Style was completely unprepared. As for Yi Xu, it was actually quite tricky to accurately attack while under the cover of Hundred Blossom's light and shadows. This was a detail easily overlooked. Royal Style's Ren Junxi understood that the victor of this dungeon could be determined with this one battle, and so he was supporting his teammates with all his strength, assisting their counterattack. But all of a sudden, his character was moving forward out of his control. Ren Junxi was confused, but he suddenly realized what had happened. Oh shit, Ren Junxi only had time to give a shout to warn his teammates, but everyone's reactions were too slow. They could only watch, wide-eyed, as Ren Junxi's gentle angel was suddenly dragged from their sides, into the midst of dazzling Hundred Blossom's attack range. Save him, Tian Sen immediately shouted, already waving the scythe in his hand and sending several lightning talismans flying in the direction gentle angel had been grabbed. Before he reached the enemy ranks, first use some attacks to disrupt the enemy's rhythm. But Yi Shu was prepared. He directly pulled Gentle Angel out of the Hundred Blossom style cover, and with a fling, Lord Grimm sent Gentle Angel farther away. Fuck, Zhang Jiali cursed. Yi Shu hadn't even warned him that he was going to do this. After flinging Gentle Angel, Yi Shu just patted his butt and left. Meanwhile, Royal Style was still furiously trying to rescue their healer, and Zhang Zhao's dazzling Hundred Blossoms was about to take the brunt of their fury. What's wrong with you? Zhang Jiali yelled. You can take care of this. I believe in you, Yi Shu replied as Lord Grimm quickly made his escape. Zhang Jiali was helpless, he couldn't just retreat. Once Royal Style saw that their healer had been sent somewhere else, he would probably have to stop them. And the other members of Tyranny, upon seeing that Yi Shu had captured Royal Style's healer, would of course have to cooperate to take out the healer. On Happy's side, Yi Shu had already prepared for them to receive the healer even before he went to grab him. Once he threw the healer over there, a barrage of attacks fell upon the healer. Under this fierce assault, how long could a healer last? Royal Style's rescue team couldn't make it over in time and Misty Rain's attack strategy relied on distance, so they didn't have the power to charge in. In the midst of chaotic battle, Gentle Angel fell. Tyranny's members were pleased, but none of them noticed that in the crowd of happy members around the fallen player, someone plucked an item from the ground beside Gentle Angel. Tyranny was in the dark, but Royal Style was clear on the situation. Right now, they had neither healer nor shard, and they suddenly unleashed the ferocity of a team that had nothing to lose. But Tyranny's experts were experienced with this sort of sudden shift in tempo, and this change didn't throw them off. They were temporarily beaten back by Royal Style, but soon enough they stabilized and counterattacked, defeating another Royal Style player, Shu Huiliu's striker. Royal Style was being thoroughly routed, and Misty Rain faltered as well, as the pressure of the attacks on them increased. Their long-ranged attacks simply had no way of countering the explosive power of Happy and Tyranny. It's time, charge, Yi Shu ordered. This time, he wasn't mounting a sneak attack, Lord Grimm was playing a direct attacker. Together with Tang Ru's soft mist, they launched an assault that would deal the death blow to Misty Rain. With Tyranny's attacks restricting their movements, Misty Rain no longer had enough room to maneuver. The long-range attackers couldn't do anything as Yi Shu and Tang Ru's characters closed the distance. Their formation was instantly broken apart. Beautiful. Working with you guys is great. You haven't let me down, Yi Shu praised loudly. When Happy attacked, Tyranny's coordinated support had been the key to knocking down Misty Rain, without them, it still would have been possible for Misty Rain to defend. Shut up, will you? Tyranny, of course, didn't need any of Yi Shu's praise. Keep working hard, Yi Shu called. On Happy's side, their attacks were clearly targeting one character, Chu Yang Shu's Windy Rain. After they had blown apart Misty Rain's formation, the other players were seemingly forgotten. But Chu Yang Shu wouldn't be going down that easily. With a teleport, the elementalist instantly escaped from Happy's attacks, traveling to a place where it'd be the most difficult for Happy to readjust their formation and continue attacking. 
But as soon as windy rain reappeared, a satellite beam fell from the sky. This was an attack made by correctly predicting the exact location at which windy rain would teleport to. Chu Yangshu immediately realized she had fallen for the trap. Happy had known that she would try to teleport to escape, and they had purposely left that opening for her to jump to. And the launcher's extremely long range allowed her to instantly cover any corner of the battlefield. Caught by the satellite beam, Windy Rain couldn't move, and two shadows suddenly appeared by her right and left. Lord Grimm and Deception, two shadow clones. Even though they couldn't travel as far as a teleport, it was an instant movement technique too, and there was no faster way to close the distance to an opponent. Afterwards, Windy Rain was grabbed by Lord Grimm, and with another fling, was sent to where Happy wanted. Misty Rain's three sharpshooters pounced on them in an attempt to save their captain. Li Hua directly used a shadow dance with his dark forest, acting like a whole army of troops to try and disrupt Happy. Help please, Yi Shu shouted, of course not to Happy, but to Tyranny. You hold your position, throw Windy Rain over here, Tyranny answered. This sentence was really a lucky hit. Tyranny of course didn't know about the shard held by Windy Rain, but in the current situation, sending Windy Rain over to their side was just one logical option. After all, even though the teams were allied, they could still take damage from each other, so executing a combined attack would require extremely careful coordination. For example, when Yi Shu's Lord Grimm had stolen away Gentle Angel, he had to hide behind the Hundred Blossoms display, unlike the Tyranny members who could dive directly into the lights and shadows. As soon as Tyranny proposed this plan, they prepared to receive the target, but when they looked over, they saw that Lord Grimm and Steamed Bun Invasion were still fiercely engaging in battle with Windy Rain. Besides these two characters, the others didn't have fling. It seemed that tossing a character over wasn't very convenient for Happy. There was no other option, Tyranny had to change their plans. It was just a small thing, not enough to pose any difficulty for them. To supplement Happy's attacks without disrupting their rhythm, that was something they could do. Under Happy and Tyranny's partnership, the situation stabilized. Windy Rain was caught in between the two teams, and her health bar was plummeting. The three sharpshooters and the ninja persevered in their attacks, and Chu Yangshu coordinated with them as she fought back, but in the end they still were unable to rescue her. No solution. After fighting to this extent, both Misty Rain and Royal Style wanted to retreat. If they continued fighting, they would all die here and that would be the end, but if they retreated now and preserved their health, there would still be a bit of hope left. Both teams wanted to withdraw for now, but now Tyranny was making things difficult. They still didn't know about the shards, so they just wanted to wipe out the two teams entirely. Although they were currently partnered with Happy to crush their opponents, they were still calculating their chances as they compared the states of their two teams. Tyranny had a healer, while Happy didn't. Although Tyranny had supported Happy in their attacks, Zhang Jinji hadn't let a single heal fall upon any of Happy's members, even though there was nothing in the system stopping him from doing so. After fighting Misty Rain and Royal Style, Tyranny and Happy would inevitably turn on each other. But one side had a healer while the other didn't, which alone was enough to tip the scales. After defeating those two teams, Tyranny was prepared to seize this opportunity to take care of Happy as well. Tyranny's ultimate goal was the total annihilation of all three other teams, a much more ambitious goal than the others. Royal Style and Misty Rain wanted to retreat now, but Tyranny wasn't about to let that happen. They would bite down hard, and not let go. So they caught Royal Style, but there was a hole in Happy's trap for Misty Rain. Just as they killed Windy Rain, the other four members chose to retreat. Where are you running? Yi Shu yelled. Give chase, as he spoke, he led Happy to furiously pursue the retreating team. This guy did that on purpose, didn't he? Seeing this, Tyranny's players began to discuss among themselves. It's clear, he's defending against us, Zhang Jinji sighed. He hadn't given Happy's side a single heal. Looking back, that must have made their intent too obvious. That guy's just too sneaky, Zhang Jiali shook his head. I say, Happy's already gotten away with all of the shards, why are you guys still being so kind to them? Royal Style's three players couldn't last much longer. Once they saw that Misty Rain's members had run, and Tyranny was still attacking them, they were helpless. Tian Sen had no idea that Tyranny still didn't know about the shards, he thought that Tyranny was trying to shake a shard out of these three players. But the issue was, their team's shard had already been dropped by Gentle Angel. 
thinking about how tyranny was wasting their time, but was in such a relaxed mood, Tian Sen couldn't resist any longer and exposed the truth. Shards? What shards? After tyranny's five heard this, they were startled. Fuck, no way, Tian Sen was shocked. These tyranny brothers still didn't know what was going on? Tian Sen quickly explained the situation in the dungeon. Once tyranny heard this, of course they understood what had happened. They had been duped by happy. Hurry and give chase, Han Wenking ordered, and tyranny turned their fire. Chapter 1117. Catching Dark Forest. Hurry and give chase, Han Wenking ordered. Royal Style's three players let out a breath for it seemed like they were saved. They could wait for Tyranny and Happy to fight it out, and maybe it'd be another devastating battle, providing them with an opportunity. But soon enough, the three realized that they had misunderstood. The hurry in Tyranny's statement included killing them. Then again, it made sense. Tian Sen admitted that their shard had already been stolen by Happy, but Tyranny had no way of verifying that this was the truth unless they killed all three of them to see if any of them were still holding a shard. They had already been fighting for so long that it wouldn't take very long for them to kill three players. Royal Style thought that they could relax, but ended up being the first victims of Tyranny's rage at Happy. Tian Sen was helpless, Chen Wanhe was helpless, He Huaitang was helpless. The three players fell, and Royal Style was officially wiped out. Tian Sen had been telling the truth when he said that they didn't have a shard. Their shard was indeed on Gentle Angel, who had dropped it to Happy. To this, Tyranny was somewhat regretful, but they weren't annoyed. Royal Style had already been beaten down, but letting them go free would definitely have come back to bite them. Killing them now prevented that possibility from happening in the future. Now, it was time to chase after Happy. Happy had claimed they were going to kill Misty Rain, but Tyranny now knew that it was just as likely they had just used the opportunity to escape. Although they didn't know who on Misty Rain held the shard, just from looking at Happy's attack pattern, they were able to guess that Windy Rain had held it. Now that Happy had their shard as well, would they continue to cause trouble for Misty Rain? Happy wouldn't, but on the other hand, Misty Rain probably wouldn't just let Happy go. Misty Rain couldn't fight against the Tyranny Happy Alliance, but if it were just Happy, Misty Rain had a better chance. Just because they lost a player didn't mean that they couldn't fight. If that were true, then they might as well just withdraw from the game altogether. Tyranny had been duped, but that was only because they lacked information. Once they understood how the event worked, the logic was as simple as 1 plus 1. After taking care of Royal Style, they would chase in the direction that Happy and Misty Rain had fled. They would hope that these two would fight bitterly, leaving a chance for them to defeat them and take the shards. Tyranny's thought process was entirely logical. Misty Rain ran, Happy pursued. After Misty Rain discovered that Happy was the only team chasing them, they suddenly changed their course of thought. Happy had taken quite a bit of damage when killing Gentle Angel and Windy Rain. It was the same situation as when they had killed Tang Hao's Demon Subduer. It was unfortunate that Misty Rain didn't have a healer, so it was very difficult to recover health during battle. Happy didn't either, but they had Yishu's Lord Grimm, who could serve as a healer in a pinch. It would be more disadvantageous for Misty Rain to drag this out longer. So Misty Rain suddenly stopped running. They turned and began charging back the way they had come. But this didn't catch Happy by surprise. They entered battle mode smoothly. Attack Dark Forest, Yi Shu had already issued orders in the team channel, so Happy's five members focused all of their attacks onto Dark Forest without holding back. They figured it out, seeing how he was clearly singled out as the target of attack, Li Hua's heart beat faster. Yes, Yi Shu had figured it out. On Misty Rain's side, Chu Yangshu's Windy Rain hadn't been the only player with a shard. Li Hua's Dark Forest held one as well. Misty Rain had already obtained two shards, which also explained why Tyranny had been unable to find one. There were only five shards, and they were all claimed by four teams. How could there be any left over for Tyranny? Dark Forest had a shard? Yi Shu couldn't be a hundred percent certain, of course, but after careful evaluation of battle, he made this judgment, and now, it was time to test his theory. Dragon breaks the ranks. Soft Mist was the fastest, separating from the others as she launched her attack. Li Hua frantically controlled Dark Forest to dodge, but unexpectedly, the target of Soft Mist's attack wasn't himself. She traveled right past him with her attack, landing in the midst of the three sharpshooters. 
Happy was focusing their attacks on Dark Forest, but they couldn't ignore the three sharpshooters completely. They still had to give them the necessary attention to stop them. Steamed Bun accompanied Soft Mist on her path of attack. Although Tang Ru's forcefulness and Steamed Bun's strangeness weren't enough to directly take down the three sharpshooters, the chaos they caused was definitely too much for the sharpshooters to quickly break free. While the two happy players kept the sharpshooters busy, Yi Shu, Su Mucheng, and Mo Fan surrounded and prepared to take down Dark Forest. Ninjas specialized in assassinations and sneak attacks, so they were normally relatively difficult to catch. But it was a shame, for Happy also had a ninja on their side. Mo Fan's technique might not be as polished as Li Wa's, but his scrap picking experience made him particularly skilled in several areas. For example, when tracking a target, not only was he incredibly patient, he was able to focus all of his attention, make good decisions, and maintain precise control of his actions. Tracking someone while scrap picking required picking them out from the midst of a chaotic crowd. Right now, however, it was just one opponent to track, and this was an incredibly simple task for Mo Fan. Li Hua was the number one ninja in glory, so he quickly sensed Mo Fan's skill, and didn't underestimate him just because he was a rookie. And then there were the other two opponents, Yi Shu and Su Mucheng, the most highly skilled partners in glory. Li Hua didn't dare take them lightly, he wanted to withdraw. This, was perhaps the greatest criticism the glory world had toward Team Misty Rain, when facing difficult situations, they didn't have the fierce spirit to keep pushing, they would always reveal a threat of weakness. This had become an iconic characteristic of their team. Ninjas had many escape techniques, and as the number one ninja, Liwa's skill in this area was unquestionable. Immediately, Dark Forest tossed a smoke bomb, releasing a thick cloud of purple smoke everywhere. Dark Forest vanished in its midst, but he wasn't finished yet. The opponent could no longer direct catch him, but Li Hua didn't rely on his own movements to change coordinates and escape. Instead, using the smoke cover, he simply used a shadow clone technique, hiding his false body in the smoke, while his real body... His real body was also in a cloud of purple smoke. Li Hua wanted to cry. This cloud of purple smoke wasn't his, this was the smoke from a smoke bomb dropped by deception. Li Hua couldn't tell where it was dropped, he only knew that he was swallowed within. Originally intended as a technique for escape, this time it was used as a technique to prevent the opponent's escape. Right now, Li Hua had no idea what his surroundings were, and he didn't dare to randomly move around. What if he took two steps out and fell right into Lord Grimm's arms? However, this was also only temporary. As the number one ninja, after the smoke bomb finished exploding, Li Hua was able to judge from the smoke's thickness where exactly the bomb had been placed. From that, he knew which direction would be the fastest way to travel out of the cloud of smoke. But, this could all too easily be a trap. Taking the shortest path, Li Hua felt that he was bound to be caught by Happy. Walk in the opposite direction, then? But what if it was reverse psychology? Fine. There were more than two directions, so he would take neither the shortest nor the longest, but instead a direction chosen at random, Happy couldn't predict randomness, could they? Indeed, Happy had no way of predicting a randomly chosen path. After Deception tossed the smoke bomb, they surrounded the cloud entirely, the five characters forming a circle. No matter where Dark Forest exited, they could immediately attack him. Although it wouldn't be enough firepower to directly kill him, it would at least prevent his escape. So when Dark Forest finally emerged from the smoke, a sword was already flashing toward him. Your defense isn't enough. This was Li Hua's immediate judgment. If he was only being attacked from one angle, even if it were Yi Shu, he believed that he could escape. Unfortunately, just as the sword was about to land, Li Hua heard an explosion above him. Lifting his head, he saw a stinger explode in the air, sending countless bits of shrapnel raining down towards him. Dancing Rain Su Mucheng. Su Mucheng of course was not the only launcher in the alliance, but she was absolutely the best at executing this type of supportive attack. Her timing and control were outstanding, resulting in this surprise effect. Su Mucheng was a true expert of restriction. She restricted not just the actions of one player in particular, but the entire battlefield. Her playstyle took full advantage of the launcher's excellent range. If the player's skill wasn't up to par, then even if the playstyle were the same, the demonstrated power and efficacy would of course differ. Su Mucheng was the number one in glory at this screen cannon style. 
Excellent Era had been relegated this year, and the pro-alliance had almost forgotten the power of this screen cannon. In fact, shortly after Yi Shu retired, it seemed as though Su Muqing had weakened greatly. Those who didn't understand thought that Yi Shu's retirement had affected Su Muqing's state of mind, but those who understood knew that this restriction style, men as a coordination with one's teammates, also in turn required the teammates to coordinate with the restriction, seizing the opportunity to kill. Su Muqing could coordinate with her teammates, but the return coordination she received was lacking. Because of this, it naturally seemed as though her power was lacking. This sort of perfect partnership and coordination, how long had it been since they'd seen this? Li Hua didn't have time to consider this question, because he was about to be played to death by this partnership. The partnership between one close and one far successfully immobilized him, and a second later, Mo Fan's deception arrived as well. In a 1v3 situation, Li Hua couldn't find an escape route, and it wasn't Misty Rain's habit to explode with power in the face of struggle. The three sharpshooters tried to help, but Happy already had Li Hua firmly under their control, and didn't mind suffering some damage. Kill At this moment, Tang Ru and Steam Bun both turned their attacks on Dark Forest as well. Misty Rain lacked a healer, and ninjas were an a durable class, and there was no escape route, and there was no way to pull off a sudden explosive turnaround. At last, Dark Forest fell, and, as Yi Shu predicted, he dropped a shard. Retreat. Happy had obtained all five shards, so they had no reason to continue fighting with Misty Rain's three remaining sharpshooters. Yi Shu immediately directed his team to withdraw. Chapter 1118. Split up. Happy wanted to run. That was their current goal, but Misty Rain still had three players left, and they weren't easy to escape from. Fortunately, there was a bit of internal conflict going on outside the game between the three remaining Misty Rain players. Liu Yining had been crowned Season 8's a best sixth player. He was a very dependable player, but right now, his position in Misty Rain was somewhat awkward. He was likely to leave this summer. And the ones to push him into this situation were Xu Qi and Xu Kaxin, the two sisters. It wasn't possible for Liu Yining to not have any opinions about this matter. Not only were Xu Qi and Shi Kashin new rookies, they were also quite arrogant. It could be said that Liu Yining didn't have any good feelings towards them. At the moment, Misty Rain was fighting to improve their team's hardware. Liu Yining was about to leave. His participation in this event had been forced to begin with. He just didn't want his emotions to ruin his reputation. Misty Rain was in a difficult situation right now, but hoping for Liu Yining to cooperate with Shu Qi and Shu Kashin to turn this situation around was quite optimistic. When Happy retreated, Shu Qi and Shu Kashin tried their best, shooting at them as they chased. For these sisters, a defeat in this dungeon and to Happy at that felt like deja vu. In last year's Christmas event, the two sisters had planned on using the leaderboards to make a name for themselves. Unfortunately, they were defeated by Yi Shu multiple times in succession. In the end, even though they had been noticed by the pro scene, the results didn't meet their expectations. This time, they had come out to strengthen their team. Misty Rain's luck was quite good. They encountered two minibosses and obtained two shards, making them the team in the lead. However, they were once again thwarted by Happy. They only had three players right now. Besides Happy, there was also a powerful opponent like Tyranny glaring at them like a tiger watching its prey. The two sisters had been a part of Pro Scene for half a year now. They knew how powerful the Pro teams were and no longer had the naive confidence in thinking that they could challenge Tyranny by themselves. They didn't have any confidence in challenging Happy either, but they couldn't swallow their anger. They had to at least try. Bullets flew. The two sharpshooters fired their guns as they chased after Happy. Liu Yining was in no mood to fight, but he had to at least show a bit of effort. As a result, he also shot at Happy as he ran, but he clearly wasn't being very diligent about it. The two sisters quickly noticed his listless attacks. Can't you try harder? Shu Qi expressed her dissatisfaction. HMPH, Liu Yining replied with his nose. Sure enough, he tried harder. He tried even harder to sandbag. The two sisters saw this. He was deliberately opposing them. There was nothing they could do though. They had heard the rumors going around in their club and knew Liu Yining definitely didn't have any favorable opinions towards them. The two were helpless. They hadn't specifically joined Misty Rain to kick Liu Yining from his position. Everyone played the same class, so it would be hard to avoid competition between them. 
Someone's spot had to be taken, so someone would naturally have to leave. The two sisters felt like Lu Yining's dislike for them was unprofessional. The two obviously weren't going to compromise. With their personalities, it would only serve to make them work even harder to let the team know that they had made the correct decision. Xu Qi complained to Lu Yining, but all it did was make that guy respond even more negatively, so she stopped talking. Ignore him. We'll do it ourselves. The two sisters abandoned Lu Yining and attacked Happy even more fiercely. As for Happy, under Yi Xu's lead, they continued to run while constantly harassing Misty Rain's players. For them, Misty Rain was no longer a threat. Their only threat was the biggest threat in this dungeon, Team Tyranny, who were probably going after them right now. Tyranny's misfortune had been Happy's fortune. Because of their good luck, they were able to avoid fighting their biggest threat. Their luck was gone now though. Tyranny must have figured it out by now. Even if they didn't, after beating Royal Style, Tyranny would still chase after them. So they couldn't stop. They had to keep running. As for Misty Rain at the rear, Yi Shu didn't care about them at all because they weren't running from Misty Rain in the first place. Misty Rain just had to have three sharpshooters though. It was very annoying. The sounds of their gunfire echoed in this underground cavern. If Tyranny wanted to chase after them, they could do so just by following the sound of gunfire. In the end, Happy had to guard against Tyranny, only Tyranny. Thus, as Happy ran, Yi Shu took any opportunities that came up to counterattack. If these three tails could be removed, then it'd be best to remove them. However, the Shu sisters weren't stupid. They realized the crux of the issue. The two had a much clearer understanding of their skill now. Trying to steal the shards with just the two of them would be like trying to steal the sky. In this situation, they needed to rely on Tyranny's help and fish in troubled waters. Happy was running away as fast as possible not because of their fear for the two sisters and the cheerleader, but because of their fear for Tyranny. The more scared their opponent was of something, the more they needed to help that something. The sisters immediately adjusted their plans. They stopped chasing Happy as closely as before and started being more on the defensive. However, they weren't going to let Happy escape from them either. Yi Shu immediately saw through this change. As a result, he promptly made a decision, Steam Bun and I will stay. You three go find the Ghost King. Hurry. Team Happy split up. Su Mucheng led Tang Ru and Mo Fan along with the five shards to figure out how to find the Ghost King. Yi Shu and Steam Bun stayed behind to block off the passage. Fortunately, the underground passage was narrow, which made sealing it off that much easier. Yi Shu and Steam Bun took the initiative to attack the two sisters. The two sisters were surprised. They clearly hadn't expected Happy to split up. Even though their side had three players, this underground passage was narrow, making it very difficult for anyone to circle around them. What's more, Lu Yinanig was still being very uncooperative with them. The two sisters had almost forgotten that their side had three people. Steam Bun, you take the left. I'll take the right. Yi Shu instructed. With his sinister eyes, he had noticed that Lu Yining was intentionally sandbagging. Even if Team Misty Rain frequently dropped the ball in tense situations, it wouldn't so bad that anyone would sandbag. Yi Shu thought about it and guessed that it was probably unrelated to in-game matters and rather some sort of conflict in the team. As a result, Yi Shu didn't pay much attention to Lu Yining. Their priorities should be the two sisters. The synergy between those two sisters was quite impressive. There were even people in the scene that predicted these two sisters to be Glory's future best partners. Truthfully speaking, Yi Shu agreed with this view too. Steam Bun followed orders. He immediately charged out, while also chatting with Yi Shu, their names seem very familiar. They should feel familiar to you, Yi Shu said. Really? Bro, have we met before? Steam Bun asked excitedly as he charged towards his opponent, Shu Kashin's Nun Dare attack. Lower your head and Nun Dare attack were two male characters. The two sisters had never attempted to hide their genders. Who would have thought that Steam Bun would forget about them so cleanly? His impression of the two of them were practically zero. Shu Kashin completely ignored Steam Bun and attacked him fiercely. Steam Bun might be talking, but his playing wasn't weak. Steam Bun Invasion twisted and turned. He dodged two shots and suddenly attacked with a powerful knee strike, striking at Nun Dare attack. Yi Shu wasn't slow either. Lord Grimm had started attacking from afar using his umbrella's gun form. 
Mid-range and close-range skills poured out endlessly. Shukii's situation was clearly more difficult than Shukashin's. In these consecutive intense battles without any healers, potions were Misty Rain's only way to heal. But better potions had longer cooldowns. In a pro-level confrontation, relying on potions wasn't reliable. Misty Rain's three players didn't have much health left. And Yi Shu and Steam Bun were no longer escaping and instead attacking them proactively. Happy had a cheerleader healer Lord Grimm, so their situation was slightly better. In this battle, Happy had the advantage. Liu Yining had to face an opponent now and he responded relatively seriously. It was just that their situation wasn't good. He wasn't able to turn the situation around. As he fought and fought, he concluded that it was impossible to win, so he turned around and ran. However, he still gave out a warning and shouted, I'm retreating. Quote dot. This was clearly a formality. He wasn't being targeted, so if he wanted to retreat, he could just retreat. But those two sisters had their throats gripped by Yishu and Steam Bun and were being beaten up. Liu Yining quickly retreated, not even attempting to help protect his teammates. The two sisters nearly died from anger, but they weren't the types to blame the gods and accuse others. The two tried hard, struggling to break free from their opponents' attacks. In the end, Steam Bun wasn't always the most reliable. He messed up and Shu Kashin's nun dare attack escaped. But unfortunately for Shu Qi, trying to escape from Yi Shu and trying to escape from Steam Bun were two entirely different matters. Shu Kashin obviously wasn't Lu Yining, who ran away on his own. After escaping from Steam Bun's clutches, she tried to save her sister. But Shu Qi, who was fighting Lord Grimm, knew better how difficult it would be and decisively rejected it, forget about me. Run away first and look for an opportunity later. Even though the two were sisters, they neatly broke away. There was none of that cheesy drama like, if you're going to die, I'll die with you. After hearing her sister's opinion, she didn't hesitate to turn and run. Yishu obviously wasn't going to let lower your head go and killed her. Ya 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 ya, Steam Bun let none dare attack go accidentally. He felt very ashamed and wanted to redeem himself. Recover first, Yi Shu yelled for him to stop. Lu Yining escaped. Shu Kashin escaped. But she didn't go find Lu Yining. She wasn't placing any hopes on this guy no matter what. The two characters ran one behind the other. They kept on running around randomly. They turned around and saw that Lord Grimm and Steam Bun Invasion wasn't chasing after them, but there were people ahead of them. Tyranny's Five had finally arrived. Lu Yining was running at the front. Before he could greet them, he heard someone from Tyranny say with a voice filled with gratitude, Over here. And then he was killed. Tyranny was a very decisive team. Chapter 1119. Catch up. Misty Rains too might have ran, but they had been counting on coming back when Tyranny and Happy erupted in conflict so that they could mop up the remains. Unfortunately, they had met Tyranny head-on as they turned. There hadn't even been a greeting before Lu Yining's something to hide was wiped out. Shu Kexing's nun dare attack had been slower, allowing her to live for marginally longer. Seeing the five from Tyranny lunge predatorily, Shu Kexing felt that being over there with Yi Shu and Steam Bun was probably better. Neither of them have any, Tyranny lamented. They had killed another two, but the ground was still clear of items. They had already asked Royal Style about how this dungeon worked. Even though Royal Style had been wiped out by Tyranny, everyone was a pro player. If they couldn't accept one loss, then everyone in the Alliance would be sworn enemies with each other. Pro players were able to distinguish between on-field and off-field situations. Thus, after Tyranny wiped out Royal Style and turned to ask them about Ghost Lair's situation, Royal Style didn't hide anything and told them all they knew. The list of online characters made things even clearer. Wind Howl and Royal Style had all been kicked from the competition and had left the dungeon. Misty Rain's members were still alive, but could they still succeed in this dungeon? Tyranny had swiftly ran in the direction that Misty Rain and Happy had gone, soon hearing the sounds of gunshots and following them. That was when they saw something to hide and none dare attack running towards them. Tyranny didn't show many mercy, crushing them at once. If they let them live, it would just come back to bite them. Tyranny wouldn't back down at all even if it was Happy in front of them. Having dealt with the two, Tyranny continued to advance. They hadn't gone far before they saw Lord Grimm and Steam Bun Invasion sitting in the tunnel ahead eating bread and drinking juice. 
Someone's here, seeing tyranny, steamed bun immediately jumped up off the ground. Stay calm, we can recover a little more health and mana, Yi Shu was much more nonchalant, allowing Lord Grimm to continue eating, his health and mana continuing to rise. Steamed Bun had always listened to his boss and hastily had Steamed Bun Invasion take out food to continue eating. Seeing the two like this, Tyranny slowed their steps. There was a fork in the road further ahead. Were the other three members of Happy waiting there in ambush? Tyranny had gone through battle after battle, hurrying over in pursuit after defeating Royal Style. They hadn't the time to sit down and use food to recover their health and mana like Yishu and Steamed Bun, so they weren't in an optimal state. Seeing that Happy seemed to be plotting something, they might not be scared, but they kept their guards up as they began to move themselves into more tactical positions. Zhang Zhao's dazzling hundred blossoms was a ranged fighter. Seeing how Yishu noticed but ignored their approach, continuing to recover health and mana, he couldn't let this go on and shot at them. Lord Grimm immediately got up and dodged, and his recovery process was interrupted. Zhang Zhao's skills continued to fly over, using his hundred blossom style to pave a way for tyranny's charge. Yishu didn't dawdle either, getting steamed bun to follow him as he turned and ran. Tyranny couldn't afford to be slow. Regardless of the possibility of an ambush, they had to press forward. But that was when they saw Lord Grimm and Steam Bun Invasion suddenly split up at the fork in the road, one swerving left, the other swerving right. This, Tyranny's players weren't sure how to react. They hastily led their characters to the fork in the road and took a look. There was a left path and a right path with one figure running down each. As for the other three members of Happy? Who knows where they were? Tyranny had already gained an idea of what Happy was planning. They had split up, Yi Shu and Steamed Bun blocking Misty Rain's way and getting the other three to go ahead. So, something as important as the shards would definitely be with the other three. However, Yi Shu and Steamed Bun had split up as well. Left or right, which would lead them to the other three? Logically speaking, Yi Shu was the core of their team, so Steamed Bun was more likely to be bait. However, on the other hand, Yi Shu might have made himself bait because he was the core of the team. But then, thinking from another direction. Stop. This sort of reverse thinking would never end. With Yi Shu's schemes, it could be either. Thus, there was no way to solve this problem with logic. They just had to chance it, it was a 50% chance. Let's pursue Yi Shu, Zhang Jiali suggested. He had voiced what everyone had been thinking. In that moment, their thoughts had converged. Wait, Zhang Jinji suddenly spoke up. If this is what we're thinking, then Yi Shu might be using this to lure us away. So we chase steamed bun invasion? Lin Jingyan asked. So we're going to start guessing how far he's planned ahead again? Zhang Jiali said. Zhang Jinji paused. True, hadn't they just decided to not try and guess Yi Shu's line of thought? But how come they felt like their thought process would be used upon coming to a decision? Let's go after Yi Shu. In this crucial moment, it was Captain Han Wenking who stepped forth. What if we're wrong? Lin Jingyan asked. Then at least we can vent by beating him up, Han Wenking replied. Immediately, everyone perked up. This reason was a great boost to their morale. Han Wenking was a truly talented captain, able to boost everyone's morale with just a single sentence. The five immediately swerved left in pursuit. Their hesitation had cost them, but it was a good thing that Han Wenking was able to settle things quickly. The five of them could, at least, still see Lord Grimm's figure. This guy occasionally turned to use aerial fire to propel himself backwards as he ran, clearly keeping an eye on what was behind him. Since Tyranny wanted to catch him, they wouldn't just race him. They were pro players. If they relied solely on their movement speed to catch someone, then that was just competing with their equipment. A pro-level pursuit would involve skills as well, either to increase their movement speed or to use attacks to hinder their target. In Tyranny's formation, there were two ranged attackers. Zhang Zhao's Spearfire and Qin Muyun's Sharpshooter naturally carried the task of hindering Lord Grimm's movement. The two raised their guns and shot, different skills speeding forth. Lord Grimm was forced to continuously dodge as he ran and this naturally impacted his movement speed. After all, he wasn't faced with normal players anymore, but pro players, including an experienced god like Zhang Jiali. As Zhang Jiali and Qin Muyun's gunners shot and ran, Han Wenking and Lin Jingyan's two fighters raised their speed and charged. Lin Jingyan could play dirty, but when it was required and when it was time to go all out, he wouldn't hesitate either. Brawler Dark Thunder directly activated a powerful knee strike, flying forwards. 
Skills that involved lunging or jumping forth like this moved much faster than normal sprinting. Han Wenking's desert dust had also activated Cloud Body, his character bounding forwards rapidly with buffed speed. Yi Shu might be a god, but his current opponents weren't normal players. It didn't take long for Han Wenking and Lin Jingyan to catch up under Zhang Jiali and Qin Muyun's control. Against this old opponent, Han Wenking was merciless. He didn't wait for his character to completely catch up before activating a high-level skill. With a soaring tiger, Desert Dust lunged at Lord Grimfeet first. High-level skills like this that came out of the blue were easy to dodge for pro players, but Yi Shu knew that under Han Wenking's control, Soaring Tiger was a move that could vary in many ways. He would have to be extremely careful when dodging. However, there was also Lin Jingyan to consider, and the combination of the two could end up trapping Lord Grimm completely with one strike. Thus, against this high-level skill, Yi Shu didn't bother dodging. Clang! The sounds of their clash rang out. Yi Shu might not have dodged, but he wouldn't just take the skill head on. Lord Grimm brought up a sword horizontally as he was about to be struck, blocking the blow with a Blade Master's guard. The damage had been greatly reduced and Soaring Tiger's knockdown effect was neutralized. However, Lord Grimm was still kicked back. Yi Shu used this momentum to go into a roll. Meanwhile, Desert Dust had been thrown up even higher by this kick and came crashing back down at Lord Grimm with a thousand ton drop. Thousand Ton Drop was a skill with super armor. Even a powerful skill like Dragon Breaks the Ranks wouldn't be able to knock this attack away. At most, the two sides would neutralize each other and both would take damage. In addition, normal super armor was able to neutralize most attack effects, but had a weakness to grabs. Grabs could break super armor. However, Thousand Ton Drop was an exception. The super armor given by this skill couldn't even be broken by a grab and grabs would be neutralized. The only kind of skill that could be used to break the super armor from this skill were skills that specialized in breaking super armor. For example, the brawlers inject poison. Unfortunately, Lord Grimm didn't know any of these kinds of skills. Even though he had access to all the low-level skills of all the classes, low-level skills were for beginners that allowed players to experience the style of the class, but they wouldn't go too deep into things. Most of the contents of that class would be accessible after classing. Thus, Lord Grimm had never learned any skills geared towards breaking super armor. Faced with Thousand Ton Drop, he didn't have any way to counter it, so he could only avoid it. Thus, Lord Grimm used Charge. He dodged and took the initiative to attack at the same time, faced with Tyranny's entire team while alone, no less. Yi Shu's choice of action was completely unexpected for all five members of Tyranny. Lin Jingyan wasn't prepared at all and the charge had been directed at him, throwing him out at once. However, Lin Jingyan was no punching bag. As he was knocked away, he also used Sand Toss. Yi Shu hastily turned his view. Lord Grimm's head turned and dodged the blinding effect of the Sand Toss. However, a grenade from Dazzling Hundred Blossoms then arrived in front of him. It was quite a ways away, having completely missed. But Yi Shu knew that this grenade wasn't used to deal damage, it was a bloody flash bomb that inflicted blind. Have you all no shame? The flash bomb went off under Yi Shu's accusing yell. Although being on a team meant that you wouldn't be inflicted with effects like this, the moment the flash bomb went off, the flash filled their screens with white light and they could barely see. But, when their vision returned, they were met with the sight of Lord Grimm holding the myriad manifestations umbrella open and blocking his own view with it. Sand toss from behind and flash bomb in front, but he hadn't been blinded at all. Have you no shame, Zhang Jiali bellowed in anger. Chapter 1120. Switching accounts. Using the myriad manifestation umbrella, Yi Shu dodged this seemingly unbreakable blind, but he was still surrounded. Although Lin Jingyan's Dark Thunder had been sent flying by Lord Grimm's heroic charge, Han Wenking's Desert Dust had already landed heavily on the ground, directly charging toward him with a ferocious tiger flurry. Another direct powerful attack. A 1v1 would be a rough battle, but Han Wenking wasn't fighting by himself right now. Although he himself hadn't done any setup for this powerful attack, he had his teammates. Lin Jingyan and Zhang Zhao's blinding partnership hadn't succeeded, but when he used the myriad manifestation umbrella to block the flash, he also blocked his own line of sight. By the time he could close the umbrella again, Desert Dust's fists were already waving before him. 
Ferocious Tiger Flurry, a level 70 attack, it was a skill that could be controlled after activation. Users of different skill levels could affect the power of this attack. Han Wanking's skill as a striker didn't need to be mentioned, and the Ferocious Tiger Flurry was exactly the kind of powerful attack he preferred with his playstyle. Ordinary controls had no way of keeping up with the rapid flurry of punches and kicks from this skill, it was impossible to continuously dodge all of them. The only possibility was to escape out of the attack range, but this was also difficult, because Ferocious Tiger Flurry was simply too fast. Lord Grimm closed his umbrella, the fist was in front of him, it seemed that Yi Shu had no way of countering, Lord Grimm was hit. Lord Grimm was instantly sent flying backwards, but Han Wenking immediately knew that something was wrong. Ferocious Tiger Flurry was a series of attacks in succession, what was the point if the opponent was sent flying after the first punch? Lord Grimm was sent so far backwards partly because of Yi Shu's own controls, he borrowed the power of this punch to put some distance between himself and his opponents. It was too naive to think that Yi Shu had no way of reacting to this attack. But it was also too naive to think that he could completely dodge Ferocious Tiger Flurry with that. Desert Dust leapt forward and instantly closed the gap between himself and Lord Grimm. The punches and kicks still flew toward his body, ready to kill. Hit. In one punch, Lord Grimm was blasted to pieces. But was Lord Grimm that fragile? Of course not, it was shadow clone technique. In that split second during which he pulled away, Yi Shu sped through the motions and completed the skill. The false body was left behind, while Lord Grimm's real body flashed away. Fighting against the entirety of tyranny by himself? Yi Shu wasn't that silly. No matter what, his goal was to run, and he was trying every method he could. He had no chance of winning, not unless the power went out at tyranny and everyone went offline at once. Unfortunately, running away wouldn't be easy. Space was limited in this underground dungeon, unlike the open air spaces where he could run and hide in any direction. Right now, there was rock surrounding him, as though trapping the fleeing Yi Shu in a cage. It wasn't long before Tyranny caught up to him again with their long-range coordinated attacking strategy. You don't drop your equipment in this dungeon, right? Yi Shu was already thinking about what would come next. Judging from previous battles, aside from shards, players didn't drop anything else. Given the drop rates in the Heavenly Domain, this outcome was very improbable unless it were true that no items could be dropped in this dungeon. You'll know once you die, Tyranny wouldn't be merciful to Yi Shu just because of this worthy. This time, their encirclement was more complete than before. Even the cleric Immovable Rock, who didn't have much battle power, was a blocking presence that limited the paths available to Yi Shu. Tyranny accounted for all possible locations that Yi Shu could teleport to with his shadow clone technique. Okay okay, I surrender, said Yi Shu. So what, Zhang Jiali, not pausing in his attacks. This scum had to be dead before they could relax. If they just stopped their attacks when he announced surrender, he would certainly take advantage of that opening. Tyranny's old generals were unfazed by Yi Shu's trash talk. Go die, as Zhang Jiali shouted, Dazzling Hundred Blossoms was just about toss a grenade at Yi Shu's feet to deal the final blow, but suddenly, the screen flashed, a QQ chat window popped up out of nowhere. It said, Lord Grimm has poked you. Shameless, Zhang Jiali almost spat out blood. By the time he switched back to the game, Lord Grimm was already gone. This poke wasn't any sort of game changer, it just interrupted Zhang Zhao's final attack, but Lord Grimm was still taken out by Lin Jingyan's Dark Thunder. What happened? Killing Yi Shu should have been an exciting thing, but Tyranny's members found that Zhang Jiali was currently wearing a murderous expression. They all turned to ask what happened, only to find that Zhang Jiali had opened QQ chat on his computer and was furiously banging out paragraphs denouncing Yi Shu's use of out of game interference tactics. You didn't mute, Tyranny's members sighed, and at the same time were quietly relieved that they had all muted QQ. When Lord Grimm died, he didn't drop anything, showing that he really hadn't been carrying the shards. Tyranny didn't have time to stand around here and chat. They still had to find the other four members of Happy, and it was possible that they already used the shards to do something. Let's split up and search, Zhang Jinji suggested. After killing Yi Shu, everyone felt a sense of relief. Before, they were wary of splitting up lest they fall into some kind of trap, but they now felt a little braver. Yes, let's split up. Tyranny divided their members into two groups, each taking one path. One path continued along their current route, while the other turned back to take the path along which Steam Bun had escaped. However, Ghost Lair's tunnels weren't so simple. 
After splitting in two, they ran into more forks in the road, and Tyranny still didn't have a single clue that would lead them to happy. They could only continue splitting up, until all five were acting alone, increasing the number of paths they were checking at once. Found them. They've already started killing the Ghost King, hurry and come, at last, Lin Jingyan was the first to find Happy's four players, and they were currently engaged in fierce battle with the Ghost King. Once the Ghost King was killed, then everything was over. But Lin Jingyan was alone, he didn't dare go up alone to attack. He could only sit and anxiously wait for his teammates. I'm close by, almost there, Zhang Jiali answered. After wandering for so long, everyone had gained a sense of the layout of the dungeon, and Zhang Jiali anticipated that he could arrive quickly. Indeed, after less than two minutes, Zhang Jiali could hear the sounds of the boss battle. Where are you? Zhang Jiali sent a message to Lin Jingyan. You've arrived? Yeah. Us two will go first, Lin Jingyan said. You stick to Su Mucheng, I'll harass the other three, Zhang Jiali laid out the plan. Okay, agreed Lin Jingyan. Go. The two characters charged forward, and following the play, Lin Jingyan's Dark Thunder headed toward Dancing Rain, while Zhang Jiali took advantage of his attack range and began to harass the other three. Facing against three rookies, Zhang Jiali was confident in his abilities. Dazzling Hundred Blossoms closed the distance, and his Hundred Blossoms cover enveloped the three at once. This was a high-level playstyle only found at the professional level, and Zhang Jiali knew that these rookies, lacking experience, would have their heads spinning under this interference. You came pretty quickly, huh? But at this moment, Zhang Jiali suddenly heard someone speak from the lights and shadows. This voice, it was Yi Shu, but how was he here? Zhang Jiali was frozen, as though struck by a grenade, but in the next second, he wanted to cry. How could he not? After all, this wasn't an official match, just an in-game event. Lord Grimm died, so Yi Shu calmly switched to another account and continued playing. It was as simple as 1 plus 1. But such a simple idea had been overlooked by tyranny. Even the detail-oriented Zhang Zhenji had forgotten this possibility, after growing accustomed to his professional background. For these pro players, the possibility of such a tactic didn't even exist in their minds. Yi Shu was still here. Suddenly, the plan of having just the two of them run interference seemed a lot less feasible. This is bad. Zhang Jiali was so bold and reckless only because he was confident that the rookies couldn't handle his Hundred Blossoms style, but now, there was a Yi Shu. As soon as he realized something was wrong, a silhouette appeared out of the light and shadow. The rookies were disoriented, but Yi Shu accurately determined Dazzling Hundred Blossoms' position from the pattern of attack and instantly attacked in his direction and Dazzling Hundred Blossoms had indeed been standing a little too close. By the time Zhang Jiali wanted to dodge, Soft Mist was already in front of him. Of course it's a battle mage. Zhang Jiali had no tears left, no path of retreat. He was sent flying by Soft Mist's dragon breaks the ranks, slamming into the wall, and was then battered by several chasers. And then, that Ghost King sent an attack at Soft Mist. Soft Mist twisted and dodged, and the attack sent by the boss was in some direction changing Chaser. It landed upon Hundred Blossom's body. Once Lin Jingyan knew Yi Shu was here, he also knew they were in trouble. The two of them had only dared to attack by themselves because they knew that aside from Su Mucheng, everyone here was a rookie. Although they wouldn't be able to take them in a fight, they could still cause some chaos without too much difficulty. But Yi Shu had switched accounts and run over here. Trying to interfere with him would be like kicking a steel board. I have to run. Lin Jingyan immediately made this judgment. He detached from Su Mucheng's side and began to run. Su Mucheng counterattacked instantly, and the powerful blasts landing upon Dark Thunder's backside truly made him pathetically embarrassed. Meanwhile, after Zhang Jiali was slammed into the wall, he didn't dare land directly. Yi Shu was still there, eyeing him. This guy, not only could he use his own attacks, he could use his aggro to lure the Ghost King over here. The intelligence of an NPC was incomparable to that of a god. It should have been on Zhang Jiali and Lin Jingyan's side, three against Happy's four. But now, under this direction, it was like a summoned monster at Yi Shu's command, launching the fiercest attacks at Zhang Jiali. Can't hold, retreat for now, Lin Jingyan shouted. What do you think I'm trying to do? Zhang Jiali was depressed. Of course he wanted to run, but now he was stuck at the corner of a wall, surrounded by enemies. How much health is left? Yi Shu asked him. 